Hi everyone and welcome to our next lesson from the Bible. I'm so happy that you are tuning in for today's story. And I know I say this every time, but it really blows me away what I'm learning from these stories now that I'm actually finally taking the time to dig into them and not just kind of read what's on the surface of the stories. I did a kid's Bible lesson last week on Esau and Jacob and how Esau sold his birthrights. It was a great Bible story for kids, but to be honest, again, I had that thought of, am I missing something? What is God wanting me to see in this story? The problem is, I was only reading the story. I wasn't really thinking into the story and thinking about what it meant. And when I did that, mind was blown again at how yet I find another story that I can fully relate to. All right, so... The story for today can be found in Genesis chapter 26, and I would highly suggest that you go back and read it for yourself after watching this video because it will help you tie together some of the missing pieces that you might have. So in Genesis chapter 26, we learn that Rebecca and Isaac become pregnant with twins. Scripture says that the babies jostled each other from within her. She didn't know that she had twins. And all of this movement made her worried, so she went to the Lord and asked, Why is this happening to me? In Genesis 26, verse 23, we read, The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. Okay, not going to lie. I read this, and it makes me uneasy. I have twins who are three years old, and yeah, they kicked each other in the womb. A lot. Or should I say my little girl kicked my little boy? Because that's actually how it went. But they love each other so tenderly and beautifully. But the thought of them separating and disliking each other to this degree is just a little hard for me to think about. But anyways, so the two baby boys were born. Esau was the firstborn and Jacob was the secondborn. The Bible says Jacob actually came out clasping Esau's foot. <laughs> the boys grew up. Esau finds favor in his father Isaac as Esau was a skillful hunter, while Jacob found favor in his mother Rebecca as he was more of a homebody who liked to do things around the house. As the boys grow, it becomes apparent that Jacob desperately wants to claim the birthright of Esau. See, since Esau was born first, he had the birthright, which meant all the promises and blessings that God had bestowed upon Abraham, which then went to Isaac, would someday be his. This is a big deal. Well, one day, Esau was famished after coming back to the tents after hunting. Now, the Bible doesn't fully tell us how long Esau was gone hunting, um, so we really can't judge quite how hungry he actually is, but his hunger led Esau to make the worst mistake of his life. He comes back from hunting, and Jacob is making stew. In Genesis 20, or chapter 26, verse 30 to 33, we read, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I am famished. Jacob replied, First, sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Wait, what? Just like that. Just like that, he gives up everything. And for what? Food. Now, like I said before, the Bible doesn't really let us know to what extent he might have been hungry or how long he was gone. So this question made me dig a little deeper to see what I could find. And from what I'm finding, yes, it could be that Esau had been gone for a long time and he was really hungry, but nothing should have brought him to the point of selling his birthright. So what was the problem? What led him to do this? Esau let his emotions of what he needed right there and then take over the lead of what he actually needed most in life, which was God. I am sorry, but what a fool! If he was at the tents, there had to be food somewhere else. He couldn't go looking for food somewhere else. He just gave up and sold his birthright. As I was writing this story today, and I'm thinking through everything of what I'm going to say as I'm presenting this to you, it suddenly hit me. I am Esau. 
<laughs> confused by that statement, I would bet to suggest that you are also Esau. I let my emotions drive so many decisions in my life because in that moment, it is the easiest decision. Not necessarily the right decision. Take today, for example. My twins are home because Kinsley is sick. Like, sick, throwing up sick. And not very good. So this mama is tired, stressed, and just wanting bedtime to come. Because I feel all these, these emotions, I'm having to consciously decide to skip doing my daily devotional because let's get real, I'm too darn consumed by everything else that's going on. So, if I say no and stop thinking about it, it'll just go away and I can maybe start tomorrow, right? Okay, Esau, <laughs> great decision. And where is that going to get me from today? Nowhere. If I can sit on my phone and scroll through Facebook, I can certainly take 10 minutes to do my devotional and dig into the word to get closer to God. That is the right decision and the decision driven without emotion. Guys, this week, I'm going to try really hard to be to not be like Esau. And while I'm at it, I'm going to try really hard to not be like Jacob either. Because let's get real. I don't want to kick somebody when they're already down like Jacob did. This story opened my eyes. I love doing this series and going on this journey to better understanding and relating to the Bible. I really, really hope you are all enjoying it also and are really getting something out of it. I hope you all have a fantastic day, fantastic week, fantastic weekend, depending on when you are watching this. I hope the weather is much nicer wherever you are watching this than where it is in my neck of the woods because today is freezing and does not feel like spring. So hopefully you have some sunshine and weather that is above 39. <laughs> so thanks for joining me again today, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day.